Here's five different background ideas you can try out in your next sports graphic. Number one is a simple textured background. Let's make a new folder. We'll call it texture. And a texture can really be any material, any plastic, wood, grunge, like a, a wall type texture. And you can go out and get these textures on your own outside or online. I've got this texture that's just a bunch of dots in kind of a, a random-ish pattern and I'm gonna drop this into my texture folder. You can fade out your texture using the opacity and just find something that's subtle. Another very basic texture is just adding grain, adding noise to any background. So let's make a new layer. And then if we go to our quick selection tool, which is W on the keyboard, and then the shortcut Command A, or if you go up to select, select all, that will select our entire screen. Then if you right click in the middle of our selection, go to fill, we're gonna fill this with 50% gray. And what we can do from here is if we go up to filter, first we'll convert it for smart filters so we can edit it later, and then go down to noise, add noise. This will create this like just general noisy grain effect on the background, 10% is good. And then we're gonna switch the blend mode to hard light in this case, because we have a white background that's gonna show up the best and it's just a little bit more interesting than like a flat white background, for example. So like this is with the texture, this is without any texture. And textures also, you'll see, will combine textures with some different background concepts. You should basically always have some kind of texture in your background or your design in general. So we'll keep some version of a texture as we get into the next examples too. The next background concept is just having some kind of faded image in the background, some kind of scene that might be related to the team names. So this is Paul Lally of the San Diego Growlers. I've got this San Diego image that I found online. And I'm just gonna size this up. I mean, we can size this however we need to. The concept here is basically fading out this image so it's just very subtly in the background. So first we'll reduce the opacity way down, maybe like 20%, and then we can even switch the blend mode to luminosity so it's blending in with the background color instead of having the full color version. And maybe we just want to see like the palm trees, for example, so we can blow this up. And even feel free to like mask out parts of the image. So masking, if you click on this mask icon in the bottom right, and then switch to your brush tool with B on the keyboard. We're gonna take a black brush and just like, we don't need the people in the bottom left here. So I'm just gonna click with a soft black brush to fade out that part. And now we just have like the San Diego palm trees in our background. And like I said, we can add back in the texture going over everything, kind of gives it a more faded effect. So we'll package this up in its own folder. We'll call this faded background. So we've got texture, faded background. Next, let's talk about just a full color photo background. So I'm gonna drag in the same San Diego image as we had before, but I'm gonna leave this one in full color. So this concept is just placing your player cutout in a scene, basically. And that's gonna come with a lot of lighting that you'll have to do. You have to take into account where the sun is, where the shadows are in the design. I have another video on photo manipulation, so it goes into more detail on how exactly you can blend an image into another photo. But for now, we'll just do a couple effects so you get the idea. One is we can blur parts of the background. So with our background layer selected, go up to filter, blur gallery and tilt shift. So this is gonna allow us to like fade out a blur basically. So I'm gonna position these two dots by his feet. That's like our, our main plane where the camera is focusing in theory. And then you can drag this dotted line up to gradually fade the background. And we can bring down the blur a little bit so it's not such a harsh effect but that's the general concept, what you would do with something like this to make it look like this was just a photo taken of our player in whatever scene we put him in. You would also add some player lighting, so you might make a new layer and eyedropper this gold color from the sunlight, fill it, and then switch it to color, and we can clip this holding option and hovering the space between layers, clip it to your cutout, and can bring this way down. Kind of a, a basic way to color a player when you've put them 
in a background. But please go into more detail than what we just went into. Watch the video on photo manipulation if you're going for that type of graphic. Another background concept is just to have a big version of the player in the background, just another photo. So let's get rid of this color and I'll hide this one, group it into photo manipulation folder. But for this next one, let's bring in a player cutout of Paul Lally, a different one. And this one, you know, if you keep it in full color, I wouldn't really consider it background. I feel like that's more part of the featured image. So in this case, let's bring the cutout down a little bit. I'm just gonna duplicate it and transform it down so we get a little bit more contrast here. You can bring it to the side even. And then with our big cutout, we can fade it out probably a little bit and maybe even switch it to luminosity so we get the black and white on the cutout. Feels like more of the attention is drawn towards the small cutout this way. And we can fade out the bottom of our big cutout as well just by going to our mask, brush tool, black brush, and softly brushing out the bottom there. And it doesn't have to be a player cutout in the background. You might wanna use the full photo. So if we double click on our smart object here and just get rid of this mask and then save it. So we wanna use the full photo in this case, you know, I'll size it up so it fits our canvas better. But you know, this is a very viable background in addition. So we can bring the opacity down. And again, you can layer a texture on top of this. You probably should, but maybe not that harsh of an effect. So keeping things subtle is the key to a good background. So let's give our big image its own folder, big image, and move on to our last one, which is a collage of images. So we can take that same big image, but the, the full color version of it, and maybe we blow it up and move it to the side. We can take another image and another one on top of that if we wanna mess with these. And what I'm gonna do here is mask them so they just kinda like fade in between one another. If you put a mask on this one and then just brush out with a black brush the edges here, you kinda get this gradual fade. Maybe we wanna fade this big one out as well. And then we can bring another cutout or another image into that bottom right area of the design. So maybe this one. And I like to take kind of like a, a big, medium, small approach with the size of these images. So let's frame that one over there. And again, mask out the edge here. So you've got this mashup of multiple images in the background. Keep playing with the masking a little bit. And maybe we want this big one a little higher. And then you can take like the whole thing and let's switch to our initial cutout here and group this into a folder and we can fade it out again. We can switch the blend mode to luminosity, again, getting that black and white theme going. And then if you fade this out, then it's sort of more interesting than just having one player image behind. We have three in this case. The other way you can do collages is to give each photo its own little square or rectangle behind our player cutout. So we can put players in shapes essentially. And so I'm gonna drag in our cutouts again. Using my rectangular marquee tool, that's M on the keyboard, I'm just gonna draw a dotted line box like this. And this will kind of be a rough example. Maybe we wanna blow this up a little bit in the mask. And we'll drag in two more player images, and again, mask out just parts of them. So we're kind of arranging them in this array of rectangles. And one more for the bottom right. I tend to like things in either threes or fives. Odd numbers just seem to work better. So let's use our third image right there. Maybe that one gets a little bigger. Yeah, I don't like it that big. Let's shrink the whole thing a bit there. And then we will package all these together again into a folder, set it to luminosity, and we'll do our fading thing. So this is another concept of a player collage where you have specific shapes that they're fitting 
in the background. You've got like a small collage, and then if you wanted to do a big collage taking up the full canvas, you can go that route too. And by the way, we can change the background color on any of these. I just went with white to be consistent for the whole thing, but you know, you can switch it to black, you can switch it to the team red. I would say generally stick to, if you're designing for a specific team or a specific player, stick to the team colors or white or black or some kind of gray. But if you want to get more adventurous with other colors, obviously there's a whole world of colors out there. Again, make sure you're combining textures with these different background concepts and utilize blend modes, use your masks. You will be able to create some awesome backgrounds.